Hey there, internets. I'm Michael, and this is Two Can Play That Game, bringing you another instalment of our Super Dungeon Explore Forgotten King playthrough. And we're getting very near now to the end, so it's very exciting. If you have been enjoying this playthrough and you'd like to be able to play the game yourself, and of course, it's still March 2016, then do take a look at the description for this video and click the link to enter the Two Can Win That Game competition, where we have two copies of this game up for grabs. That's right, we have the opened copy here that we've been using for our videos as our second prize, and our first prize is an unopened copy here. So do make sure to check that out. Okay, so let's take it to the table for more Super Dungeon Explore Forgotten King. We move on to our hero phase yet again. So for our hero turn, we have to activate Princess Emerald. The first thing we're gonna do is activate Miss G Snorts and have her poison this executioner. Then Princess Emerald is going to start by targeting the Frog Knight with a basic attack. She has one automatic success here. So that's four, five, six. So she has hit the Frog Knight, which will poise, which will kill it, in fact. So the Frog Knight is dead. Of course, that means that she will gain one wrath and she will then target Trent. And Trent's armor is free, so she's gonna need three on the dice because she's got one automatic. So she's got four on the dice, two heals, so she's gonna remove the slow and one wound from the Huntress. And she also gets a potion which will go to the Questing Knight. And she has got enough to do one wound to Trent. And her final action, she's going to do another shot at Trent and hit him. So that's three wounds to Trent now. She is then going to move six away. So you can see she's kind of running away down into the corner here. There we go. So we're back into, the, even earlier than where we started, she's just running away with them all chasing her. And she's actually going to use a potion to heal two wounds as well, which will gain her another point of wrath. And then the next hero we're going to activate is going to be the Questing Knight. And the reason for that is we're going to go one, two, three, four, and then he's going to do his lance attack down this line. His strength is two red, he gets one red for his ogre mace, and one red for his mighty throw attack. And he gets four. So, let's see, let's start this end. The mook has an armour of two, so it will die meaning he gains one wrath. The Wisp has an armor of two and he already has one wound, so he'll die. Which will give him another wrath. Trent has an armor of three, so we'll take one wound, putting him up to four. Oh, they're not going to sit on his base there, unfortunately. And then Little Sprout here has an armour of four, so it's fine. So the Questing Knight still has some movement, so he's going to move one more. And then target Trent with a basic attack. And he gets a potion, which will go to the Emerald Princess, sorry, to Princess Emerald. And that is then his turn done and the hero's activation done. 
So we do our power up. Now we killed. How many did we kill there? Killed three, so we will get three. So three loot cards. We have the wizard ring, which is an automatic plus one armor. So I think I'm going to give this in place of the diamond helm, which is a red dice. So it's an automatic one. And then we've got itty bitty wings, plus two movement. Nah, no interest in that. Uh, witch wand, plus one will. No, not interested in that. So, that's the power-up phase done. We then move on to the console turn. So, the most wrath is the questing knight here. And the command we have... Recover. So, remedy, remove all status effects. Mend, remove one wound token. So, that's going to happen to everything. So... Trent is no longer iced and only has three wounds. Little Sprout is no longer poisoned. And the Executioner is no longer poisoned. And that's the console turnover. Power up, nothing happens. We do the hero activations. So it will be the Huntress. And the Huntress is going to do an attack on the billman in front of her. She has two automatic successes. So she only needs one success on the dice, which she's managed. So that's one dead billman, which means she gains one wrath. And she'll attack the other one as well. So, oh, and she's got a heal, so she will heal a wound. And she kills that Billman. So we'll take another Wrath. And she's still got one action left. So I think she's going to move one to... Three, four, and then attack this executioner who has free armor. So she's got two automatic successes and then three more. That's enough for her to hit him. So she'll do one wound to this executioner and that's then her activation done. And then I'm going to activate Princess Emerald. Who will move one. And shoot Trent with Stinging Shot. She has one automatic success. And she's trying to be armor free. So she needs three on the dice. Oh, she's got plenty. So Trent is iced, iced again. And he takes a wound. And she's then gonna do two more normal shots at Trent. So one hits and then her final shot. Hits. So, how much damage is Trent on? He'll be on six. Yeah. So, he's on six damage. And she's then going to move one, two. And we still have Miss G Snorts who is going to do her poison bark and poison this executioner again. So we are power up stage. Well, 
the kill to Billman, so we'll get two cards. We've got a blue dex dice, no interest in that, and a heart shaped locket, no interest in that. And then we do the console, and the most Raph is on the questing knight, so he's going to be our target. But the monsters are more interested in removing status effects and healing. So once more, Trent is not iced. And then it's background to the heroes, and we have to activate the questing knight, so we'll be doing that. And the questing knight is just going to do three basic attacks against Trent here. And he hits two dice, three, three red dice, that's it. And he's trying to beat an armour of three. So, no. Yes, so he does one wound. No. So he managed one wound out of his three attacks. And then next we will activate Princess Emerald. So her little doggy is going to poison the Executioner. She's then going to move one, two, to be in range, and we'll shoot at Trent. And she's just going to do normal shots in the hope that she can kill him. So she's got one anyway, so she needs three on the dice. There we go, so that's one. And second action. Yep. Yeah. And also we can heal, but no one's wounded. So final action. And she kills Trent. So Trent is dead. And he will drop a key. And also for killing a mini boss, Princess Emerald here will take to Raph, and she'll take it off of the Thundervale Huntress. So she'll move one, two, three, four, five, six. She's going to move to there. And then power up. So we get one treasure card, and that is it. And the treasure card we get is, oh, another crystal shard, this time Citrin. So a red strength dice, a green strength dice, and Princess Power that will give other people strength. Now, I'd like to replace the Ogre Mace, but then that would mean losing the Sapphire Crystal Shard that uh, the Questing Knight already has. So instead, we'll get rid of the Dwarven Axe, which gave plus one strength automatic for the Citrine Shard. So we've got three crystals so far. That's maybe I needed to shuffle better. Um, and that's the end of the hero activation. And the end of the hero power up, except for we need to advance the Mighty Monster track. So now, as well as having plus one armor, the monsters are also getting plus one strength. And it's the console turn. And the most wrath is the questing knight. And the command is grind, horde, spawn command effects, all disturbed spawning points. There is only one disturbed spawning point. And then we do a spawn, but we do do the spawn action. It's once more the heroes go. And we will be activating 
the Thundervale Huntress. She's going to attack this executioner here. She's just going to do a normal attack. She has one automatic success and the executioner has free armor. Oh, but she's easily hit it. So that's one wound on the executioner. Second attack is a second wound. And then final action, she's gonna do a third attack. And she does the final wound to kill it. So she kills the executioner. And we'll then move eight spaces. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So she is bottlenecking this doorway here. Then we'll activate Princess Emerald. We'll go one, two, three, four, pick up this key. Five, six. And she'll use one action to shoot a mook here. And she's successful. And she'll do second action, shoot this mook. And it's successful, so that dies. She has a third action. So she might as well try and shoot the little sprout here. She has four armor. And she manages it. So she'll poison it and do it one wound. And that is the end of the hero activation. So we do our power up. We killed three creatures. So we get our three loots. However, none of these are better than what we already have. Except for potentially the plus one action. That could be really useful. So I'm going to give that to the Thundervale Huntress instead of plus one will. And the rest we'll get rid of. And that's the end of the power up phase. So we go on to the console turn. And the most wrath is Princess Emerald. And the activation is move one, unique one, fight one, and then spawn. So move first. The closest elite is Little Sprout here who wants to be within a range of two. So he'll move one space. Then we need to go all the way onto our third tile. We're back over that way. And so the elites here, we have the frog knights. So they move eight. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. So they're queuing up, trying to get past the huntress here. The billmen won't move as they want to stay near this spawn point waiting for an executioner to come out. So unique one. So the little sprout uh, does not have a unique ability, so it won't do anything. The house of frog gang, which is these frog knights here, would have frogger, which means that they would move again. Uh, five squares towards the hero with the most wrath, but they can't actually get past 
Thundervale Huntress, so that's not going to make any difference. And that's the only unique actions. Then we do fight. So, first up will be our little sprout attacking Princess Emerald. And the little sprout has no action points, so it can't actually attack. So that leaves our froggers, our uh, frog knights. Now, they are in a gang, so they'll be both attacking the Huntress, that's the only person in range, and they will have a strength of four, so pretty nasty. So I'm gonna use the Questing Knight's potion to give the Huntress an extra red dice on her defense. So her defense will be three blue, and one red dice. She does have one automatic success. But they have a strength of four, so she needs three on the dice, and they're each getting one attack on her. So that's fine for the first attack. And then the second attack is not good enough. Only two successes on the dice, she needed three. So she will take a wound so that is then fight done, and we then do spawn. So we only have the one spawn point, which is over here, and it will spawn this one executioner. And of course that does mean that the spawn point will take another point of damage. So it's now on two points of damage. Can I take one more before we get the forgotten king on the table? So then we perform our power up, but there's nothing to do. So it'll be the hero's turn. And we have to activate the questing knight. So what do we want him to do? Well, I think he's going to attack the little sprout here with with a normal attack. And he rolls two red, three red, just free red. Oh, so he gains a potion, which he does need. And he does do a wound as well. So that's two wounds on the little sprout, which kills it. And then the big sprout pops out. Now, he still has a couple of attacks, so he's going to use them. And the King Sprout has three armor and six health. So, not enough to hurt him. He wants to go one, two, three, four, five, which is all his movement then used. And he's going to open this chest, which gets us two treasure cards. And we have trusty lock picks. Or a cloak of wards. Now, they all have one magic item already. And I think, I think what they've got is better, so they're actually going to discard this treasure, which does mean that they can remove a status effect or wound token for each one, so they can do two. So they'll do that. And then the next hero I'm going to activate will be Princess Emerald, and Mr. Snorts is going to come over here, and he's going to poison the King Sprout. And then Prince Emerald is going to go one, two, three, four, five, six. And she's now in range of the Frog Knights. And she's going to target one Frog Knight. She has one automatic success. So that's four successes, two potions and a heal, she doesn't need. 
Uh, so four successes, they have free armor, so that is enough. So one of those frog knights is going to take one wound and be poisoned. And she's then going to attack the other frog knight. And she will hit it, so she will wound and poison the other. So they're both wounded and poisoned. Then she's got one action left, so she's going to shoot one of the frog knights. And we'll say she'll target the near one. And she hits, so she actually kills the far one. It's confusing, I know. And that's then the end of the hero activation. So we get one loot card because we killed one creature. Which is the Dwarven... Oh, no, we killed two, sorry. So we get a Dwarven Axe, which gives an automatic one strength. Which might be better than that red dice. And we have a Fizzy Beverage. So I'm going to reduce... Prince Simmel's armour to give her an extra action with the 50 beverage and I'm going to replace the questing knight's ogre mace with a dwarven axe and then we are finished on our power up phase so we move on to the console turn now the questing knight has the most wrath so he is the target and we have a Grifa. Bully, all commands target the hero with the least wrath. Ooh, which is the Thundervale Huntress. And um, then we're doing move one, fight one. So we've not got any bosses out. So nearest elite is actually already next to her, so it doesn't move. Then next nearest is our executioner here. He'll go one, two, three, four, Five, right up behind our frog knight here and then the uh, king sprout has a movement value of three can't actually get past the dog so he's trapped and then we do our bite so we start with our frog knight here um, we're going to use potion, questing knight's potion, to give the huntress an extra armour. So her armour is three blue and one red, and she's got one automatic success. And the frog knight is not in a gang, so it has strength of three. So, and she got three total successes, so she's fine. And then the executioner is in a gang, so he has a strength of five. And she has failed that. And he does massive damage, so that's two wounds. And slow. So I think Princess Emerald is going to drink a potion there to remove two wounds from the Thundervale Huntress. And that is then the end of the console turn and we're back round to the heroes. And we will be activating the Thundervale Huntress first because we have no choice. And so first thing she's going to do is use a basic action to attack the frog knight in front of her. And her attack is a green, a red, two blue, a red, and one automatic success. And so she's got five successes, and the Frog Knight's armor is only three, so that will hit it and kill it. And we also get two potions and a heal, 
that will remove her slow. And our frog knight is dead. She will then do a lightning charge, which has a range of two and gives her an extra red dice to attack the executioner. And she has seven successes, which will beat the executioner's armor of three. And so that will do a wound to this executioner here. And it will also push him back five. So one, two, three, four, five. And she has one action left, but she's not going to use it. So Princess Emerald's then going to activate. She's going to move to there. And she is going to shoot the spawning point. So the spawning point, she will be rolling one red, one green, one red, one auto success, one red and two blue. So she has an automatic success here already. And the spawning point has armor of two. So she has indeed smashed the spawning point. So that's its final health, and it is the final spawning point destroyed. Which means Princess Token pops out. And I forgot to draw an explore card. So I will draw one now, and it is a secret code. Add one Princess coin to the party's backpack. So it wouldn't have made any difference anyway. So that's good to know. Um, and I like this. It's an uh, old school console thing, if you remember. They used to always have these codes. And it's saying you've entered that code to cheat, basically. Um, okay. So she still has two actions left. So she's going to target Billman directly in front of her. Actually, she's got three actions left because she's got plus one action. So she'll target that Billman anyway, and we'll kill him. And then third action. Not sure if those sentinels there, which give plus one defense to these billmen at the moment, count as a structure. They do count as a structure, so it is blocking line of sight, so she can't target. So there is no one left for her to target. So that will be the end of her turn. So that's the end of the hero's activation. We do our power up. So we get two treasures and no interested, sorry, two loots and no interest in either of them. So we'll just discard those. And then it's boss spawn. So we spawn our final boss. So we have the Forgotten King out. Got his card just here because he has eight movement, three actions, two strength, four armor, a range of six, ten health. And his abilities, he is immune to poison. He has hubris, which gains plus one strength for every equipment card the target has at equipped. So they all have four equipment cards at equipped. So he's actually on strength six against everyone. And then he has the Strangle Fawn ability, which will slow them, and Primal Roar, which will do knock down. Okay. So. 
It is the console turn and turbo move two. So first one we move is the forbid, uh, Forgotten King here. He has six range. So one, two, three, four, five, six. So he wants to move forward one. Then next would be him and he wants to move five. One, two, three, four, five. Then the Billmen want to get in range. So one, two, three, four. One, two, three. One, two, three, four, five. And then everyone's actually in range, so the second movement does get wasted. And we're around to the heroes again. And we have to activate the questing knight. So he'll go six to there. And he will then do his mighty throw. So he'll be rolling three red dice, and he has one automatic success. So eight, so I think, uh, yeah, that's a hit. So that will hit the Forgotten King, so that'll be one wound on the Forgotten King. I'm actually just gonna track this on his card or buy his card, because, uh, so, no, we'll put it there. One. And then the Executioner, because it's an area effect, will get hit directly. And it does also hit, so the Executioner is on two wounds. It can only take one more. And then the Questing Knight has one more action, but nothing to perform, so we'll end it there. And then the next action, we're going to activate Princess Emerald. Who's going to take a few steps back and then take... A stinging shot at the Forgotten King. So she rolls two red, one green, one red, two blue, and another red. And she has one automatic success, and she's trying to be an armor value of four. So she has easily done it. So the Forgotten King takes another wound. would be poisoned except for he's immune to it but he does get iced so we shut down his unique abilities and then princess emerald is just going to do two normal shots at the forgotten king so we've got seven that's enough to do him a wound and oh only three which isn't enough so it doesn't hurt him. Okay, that's Princess Emerald done. So we're done on the heroes. Uh, they don't get any loot. And that's the end of the power up. And we're on to the console turn. So most wrath is Princess Emerald. And the command we have is Griefer. All commands target the hero with the least wrath which is the Thundervale Huntress. So we've got move one. So everyone is within range, except for poor old King Sprout over here who can't get any closer. And then we do fight one. So first will be the Forgotten King, but before that, I'm gonna use the potion from the Questing Knight to give the Huntress an extra dice. 
on her defence. So her defence is three blue and one red. And the Forgotten King has got three attacks with a strength of six. So first attack, she fails to defend. Second attack, she fails to defend. Third attack, she fails to defend. But that's it over from the Forgotten King. Next we have the Executioner. But before that, Princess Emerald's going to use a potion to heal two wounds from the Huntress. So Executioner attacking, strength of five, hits, and that does two wounds and slow. And then the King Sprout here is poisoned, so has no actions to attack with. Then the power up, there's nothing to resolve, and we're on to the hero turn. And then I have to activate the Thundervale Huntress. So let's start with her, and we're going to start with a Trample. And she will be rolling two blue, one red. One red, one green. And has one automatic success. So five successes and a heal and a potion. So she's going to remove one wound off of herself and give a potion to the questing knight, I think. And so that's five successes on the Executioner armor free. So that will kill the Executioner. And it will also kill this Billman here. She's going to move forward and do two attacks. on the Forgotten King. So we're trying to beat four armour. So four successes is not enough, but she has got a heal, so she'll heal one wound. And a potion. And she does have one final attack. And that is enough. So that will do one wound. So that's four wounds on the Forgotten King. And that's her done. Then we're going to activate Princess Emerald. Who is eight away from the Forgotten King. So she will target him straight away. And she's going to do four attacks on him. And she has one automatic success already. So she will need four on the dice. And we have five on the dice, so that will do it. And she'll heal a wound off of the Thundervale Huntress. So that's five to him. Uh, that won't do anything, but we'll heal that slow. Third attack. We'll do him a wound, so that's six. And then final fourth action is another wound. So that's seven wounds on him. And that is then the end of the hero's activation. They killed two creatures, so they gain two loot. And we get a potion bandolier and an ogre mace. 
Now, neither of these we want, so we're just going to discard them. And then there's nothing else to resolve in the power-up phase, and we move on to the console turn. Now, Princess Emerald and the Thundervale Huntress are shared wrath, but Princess Emerald activated last, so she is currently the target. And the command is... Hardcore. So what this means is we will do... Move one, unique one, fight one, and then spawn will do nothing because there are no spawn points remaining. The Forgotten King is actually trapped in here at the moment. As is our Sprout. And so are our Billman because they have nowhere to go. So movement will do nothing. Unique. The King Sprout here will do his... Root down, wave six. So, two armor against three strength. So, little Miss G Snorts is dead. And the Forgotten King is iced, so his unique will not trigger. Then we do fight. So, the Forgotten King will be targeting the Thundervale Huntress. And we'll be doing free attacks. So the questing knight's going to use his potion to give her an extra dice. So she will have three blue dice and one red dice and one automatic success. And she's up against strength of six. So that's one wound. That's a save. And then another wound. So Princess Emerald is going to use a potion to heal those two wounds off of the Huntress. And that is then the console turnover, and we're back round to the heroes. And we have to activate the questing knight. And the only thing he can actually do is his mighty throw, so he's going to do that. So he gets three red dice and one automatic success, and he needs to beat armor of six because of these sentinels here so we get a potion but we fail to do any damage and then we get to activate one of our other heroes and i'm going to activate princess emerald who's going to take four shots at the Forgotten King. So let's get her dex dice already. She has one automatic success and she needs so she needs six or more on the dice. So that's only five, so that's a fail. That's a six, so that's one success. So that's one more wound. So that's eight wounds on the Forgotten King now. And we get a potion. And third action is a fail. Final action is a hit. So one wound off of killing the Forgotten King. And that is the end of the hero's activation. There's nothing to resolve in power-up. So we move on to the console turn again. And once again, we have the questing knight drawing with Princess Emerald. So what I'm going to do is going to have the questing knight immediately use his potion to give himself plus one armor. 
because that then means I can move a raft token onto him and he has the most, so he'll be the target. And the command we have is Gauntlet. Spawn will do nothing, move. We will actually be moving our King Sprout here who moves three spaces. So two, two, three. And then we fight. Now there's nothing in range for the King Sprout. The only thing we need to worry about is the Forgotten King. And he'll be doing three attacks on the Questing Knight with a strength of six. So Questing Knight has one from his magic armor. One, two, two blue and a red. So he's got three red dice, two blue and a green. And he also has two automatic successes. So he needs four or more on the dice. So that's one defended, two defended, and three defended. So he defended against all the attacks. And then there's nothing to resolve in power up. So we go around to the heroes again. And first up, is the Thundervale Huntress, because we have no choice. However, she's in a good position to attack, so we're just gonna have her do basic attacks. So she gets two blue and one red dice from her strength, a red and a green die from her crystal shard, and then has one automatic success, and she's got four hit attempts. So the Forgotten King is on six armor. She's got one auto success, so she needs six on the dice. And there you have it, that's 10. Lovely overkill for the final blow on the Forgotten King. And he is dead. The main boss is dead, the heroes have won. Long live the heroes! And that is Super Dungeon Explore Forgotten King. So it's finally over, the heroes have won and vanquished the evil Forgotten King. So I do hope you have enjoyed this. Of course, if you have, please do check out the rest of the videos on the channel. Subscribe to the channel, share it with your friends and family, and do also check us out on social media. You can find us on Facebook or on Twitter. And as always, thanks for watching and bye for now.